Hey what's up, Shackman here and in this video I'm going to show you how you can incorporate Stretch with Blender's Inverse Kinematic. I'm going to show you how you can set it up from scratch and also like a few things to keep in mind, a few pitfalls, a few tips and tricks. And then I'm also going to break down this example here. It's robot arm that I recently made. So people often think squash and stretch is only useful for cartoony stuff. But as you can see here, I'm using this stretchy bone to just keep everything nicely together. Uh, because I made this robot arm to pick up trash cans from the ground, attach it to a spaceship, and then I realized it doesn't really reach the ground. Uh, so I needed some way to extend this arm, so I cut it, cut it in here, added these metal pipes, which should probably be a different material, and also these stretchy bones. And yeah, so now I can do this and I can also quite nicely go in here and define how much do I want this stretch to be part of the IK. So if I make it zero, and you see this was my problem, right? It was, it couldn't really get where I wanted to get and then everything uh, looked pretty, not very well. And the hydraulics that I have in here, of course, also look pretty bad. So I can now say, okay, I want this to uh, come out here. Nicely. Okay, so let's set it up from scratch and explain how things work. Okay, so Shift A to add armature, GX, just move it here, and then I tap into edit mode. I'm gonna pick this one, Shift D, Y to move it. Uh, I just wanna have a root bone, so I'm gonna pick this one, Shift select this one, Control P, make parent, keep offset so this my root bone this is going to be the IK just makes things a lot easier to have a bone that is not part of the IK so I can just pick this one let's go into side view actually let me hide the original armature so tap and now E to oops E to extrude E to extrude one more time then I pick this one uh, no let's pick this one say shift d so we just duplicate it put it on here and i want to parent this one this is going to be my target where the ik tries to point to and so it's already parented to this one that is good okay so let's go into post mode and i select this one first because i want this to be the target where the ik points to then i shift select this one so this is now the active bone and i shift i add ik to active bone so this one just got the bone constraint and we don't want to go all the way down. Let's just say one, two, three. So now those three bones are going to try to get here. So what the IK does, especially is saying like, okay, how can I get the tip of this bone to the bottom of this bone while keeping the bottom of the last bone of the IK chain there it is, right? That's what the IK does. And the only tool it has right now is rotation, which is why when we reach this point where you can't rotate anymore to get any closer to this point, they're just like that. But of course, we can also give it a stretch. So let me first show you a little uh, problem you might say that can happen is when you add the stretch to the bone that has the IK constraint on it, uh, bad things can happen. Uh, let me tap into edit mode first and I'm going to extrude one more because I mean this might be you know your machine you have this IK here and then you got a bunch of stuff going on after that which is for example what happened in my machine the IK only goes to here but then all this like grabbing stuff that's still connected but yeah I don't want it to be influenced so back into post mode I do that with F3 that just uh, shortcut I set up otherwise just go in here object, post mode, and so on. So now if I want to say, instead of just using rotation, I also want to use uh, stretch. And stretch is basically scaling. So the IK is going to scale the bones. So let's see, I'm still in post mode here and I put it all the way here. So this bone, this tip of this bone trying to get here, can do it, but I can use stretch. It's enabled here by default, uh, but nothing is happening because you have to enable it for every single bone. So if you go into the bone tab here, under inverse kinematics, you see you have this IK stretch. By default it's zero and this is why I don't see any stretching. Uh, as soon as I increase it just a tiny bit, 
Now the Icanos, oh, I can also incorporate stretch. And you might see the problem is whatever I had attached to this bone also gets scaled. But the interesting thing is that only happens when I stretch the bone that has the IK sitting on it. So let's put that back to zero and let's pick this bone and give it a bit of stretch. And as you can see, the, this bone did not get scaled. I'll show you, it looks pretty big actually, but you can see it's uh, the same size. And that is quite important because when you have a mesh attached to that, let's see, I go back to this. Let's say I put the trash can here and I have the trash can selected. Shift click this one, go into post mode, set this bone, control P, set parent to bone. So now I have this connected here, right? So if I move this, uh, moves with it. And of course, if I use the stretch on this one, um, whatever mesh you have attached to it gets pretty big. So just a little pitfall here when you put the stretch on the bone that has a K constraint on it, then everything afterwards is also going to get stretched. Everything that is parented to that bone, just like any other object, whatever is parented uh, gets scaled along with the parent. There's an easy way around that and that is a bone constraint. So we don't want this bone to get scaled. So unfortunately, locking the scale here doesn't really change anything because the scale of this bone is the same. It's just scaling uh, along with its parent. So this one, I, mean, I can show you, but uh, doesn't really change anything. The trash can still gets pretty damn big, even though I have it locked here. But what you can do is add a bone constraint. So select the bone, add the bone constraint tab, and choose limit scale and then I can just hold down because I want all of them and I can hold down and click and drag you just have to make sure to go in a vertical line yeah that happens um, as soon as you go left and right with the mouse then you're changing the value so you gotta go in a nice vertical line yes and then you can click one so now it's all the same and now if I move this bone um, the, the difference here is, this is the local scale, but here the bone constraint, that is now the world space. So relative to the world, I want this to always be at one. And of course, if you're doing some cartoony stuff, you could actually say, you know what, I just want to scale this along a little bit. So you could say like, go from one to 1.2. Yeah, so this is pretty much it for how to set it up. And now let's look at this example on how I use this to move parts of this robot arm. Actually, let me just delete that. And let's go in here and add H to whoops, show everything. And you know what? I'm going to get rid of the stuff that doesn't really matter for this one here. Yeah, this one doesn't matter. So, okay. Now I have this armature go into post mode. This is the target bone and this is the IK that is trying to get to that bone and it starts all the way here. Um, you can also ignore those bones. Those are just for the hydraulics that I showed in the last video. Now the important thing is my stretch bone. So if I move this one here, you can see this bone is getting stretched. And I didn't attach anything to this bone. I didn't attach mesh to this bone. So I have this part here is attached to this bone and then the bottom part that is holding it is attached to this bone. I just have this bone in between that is connecting the bones and stretching so the IK knows okay how am I gonna solve this and it just knows oh I, I got some space here that I can squash and stretch and that's how this IK works. So let's see in here, and I go G, right, I can move this out, it stretches, and since the stretch is not on the IK controller, it doesn't affect everything that's coming after it, or rather that is paired to it. Now one important thing to note is that I lock this bone on all axes. So here bone tab, inverse kinematics, it is stretching, but I have the X, Y and Z lock. So it's no longer going to use its rotation to try to solve the IK. Because if I 
undid that, then this one would start rotating and then uh, it's going up and down and of course maybe you want that but uh, in this case I surely did not want to get twisted in all weird directions. So I just lock the X, Y and Z and therefore it's just moving nicely along this axis. On top of that you might also want to limit how far this thing can go in and out. So if I pick the target here and I move it all the way back, like that's not looking good, it's going inside here because now my stretch bone is exactly at zero. But it's pretty annoying to set it up having the bone by default at zero, so it's much easier to have the rest post something like this. And of course you don't want to go out too far, I mean eventually I'm gonna run out of pipes. Now what you can do is you can simply add a bone constraint on this bone. So you see here by now it has location, if I hit Alt G it's at zero and that is the rest pose. And with a bone constraint, we go in the bone constraint tab here, add bone constraint, let's see, limit location. If I choose local space, that means how far can I get from the rest pose. And the axis that I want to limit is the Z axis, which is kind of hard to see. Can I hide this? Yes. You see the bone. So the Z axis, that's the one I want to limit. Uh, the cool thing is you can just, wait, um, turn it on. Z, Z, right now zero, zero, so I can't move it at all. But if I hit G and I drag it to here, you can see here on the top, if I do that, it's still moving this. I just can't see it. Actually, if I disable that, so you can see I just move that. So I can still use G to move it around. So I can find like the best point. And let's see the maximum that I want to go. Let's see, minus. Actually, not zero, but um, let's see, minus zero point zero five. I could actually go like let's see, zero point zero. Well, it doesn't matter. And now if I want to move out again, I just hit G, drag it all the way here, and then I can start playing around with that. But I need to go in the other direction. So as you can see, this uh, Z axis is pointing this way. So negative means that way. So, and now I can just, uh, 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 maybe 1.9. Oh, I had moved it further out. If I move it even more. Okay, now we're here. And now I can say, okay, this is the maximum stretch that I want. And yeah. Okay, this is it for this video. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, feedback, criticism, just let me know. I'm gonna do a lot more Blender tutorials in the future. Also just started a Patreon where I'm gonna put all my project files. So if you wanna support me and my channel, sign up on Patreon and you can get all those project files like this one and yeah, pretty much anything that I'm going to do. Okay, thank you very much and goodbye.